shall rejoice. This is the day made joyful noise. We are His chosen, called for to praise Him. Come on, His people shall rejoice. Let all God's people shall rejoice.
is worthy to receive the praise. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Jesus is worthy to the praise I come to praise your name O Lord and to glorify you as King I lift my voice and I lift my hands in worshiping you May kanya-kanya tayong struggles. Hindi tayo minsan pareho. Iba yung sa'yo, iba yung sa akin. Minsan nakakatagpo tayo ng mga tao na kapareho din natin ang mga pagsubok, nangyayari din naman yan. Minsan namimit mo yan sa trabaho, na-overhear mo, ay pareho kaming heartbroken. Nangyayari din sa akin yung nangyayari sa kanya. Ay pareho kaming uh, single mother. O pareho kami na na-terminate sa ganitong trabaho o nakulong minsan. Minsan nakakatagpo tayo ng mga katulad natin. However, we realize eventually in our Christian walk, in our spiritual journey, na every now and then, meron talaga tayong struggles, whatever they may be. Ito may parang unique sa iyo o di naman kaya meron kang nakakapareho. Struggle sa family, Struggle sa trabaho, sa pera, sa love life, sa ministry, sa weaknesses, sa temptations. Struggle sa sarili. Ika nga, to many of us, we could actually say this, the struggle is real. And today we will discuss that, this subject matter of struggles and how to overcome them. Sa message na pinamagatampo natin ngayong gabi, magpatulong kung saan ka struggling. The title of our message for this evening, Magpatulong Kung Saan Ka Struggling. At ito po ay tip number four sa ating message series na pinamagatampo nating sampung tips para sa Christian. 
Bisa pa nga po tayo muko, pumikit, manalangin sa Panginoon. Let us commit to the Lord the study of His Word. Aming Diyos at aming Ama, nagpapasalamat po kami sa gabing ito. Na minsan pa, binigyan niyo po kami ng pagkakataon upang sa inyo ay sumamba. Kasama ng mga kapatiran po namin na narito sa aming worship center. And even those watching this through social media, sa Facebook at sa YouTube, and even as a video message, minister to your people in power. Haya among mapakinggan naming lahat sa oras na ito ang tinig ng Diyos. Kaya kung ano man ang pwedeng humadlang, kung ano man ang ginagawa ng kaaway upang mahadlangan kami na mag-benefit completely from listening to your word today, we rebuke all such works in Jesus' name. And we declare Satan and all his demons powerless in Jesus' name. At natutuwa kami, Panginoon, kami nagagalak sa oras na ito na kami nananambahan at nakikinig sa inyong mga salita dahil kami nananampalataya na kumikilos ang inyong banal na Espiritu. Uh, your Holy Spirit is moving in power that shall give a spiritual restoration, a spiritual renewal, spiritual revival to your people. At kung meron kami mga kasama, Panginoon, o di naman kaya nanonood nito ngayon, na first time niya na makapakinig ng ganitong message, o ito yung oras o pag kakataon na tinakda mo upang siya'y maborn again. Lord, we thank you because we know nothing can hinder you from saving those you want to save. Truly, God, you are mighty to save. And we honor you, we praise you, sobra ang gratitude namin sa iyo, Panginoon, para sa buhay na meron kami, sa aming kalusugan, sa aming mga tinatangkilik, sa aming mga nagagawa, sa trabaho, at pati na rin sa aming mga pagsubok, pati sa aming karamdaman, pati sa aming mga problema, sa lahat ng yan, Panginoon. Thank you pa rin. Thank you, Lord, pa din. Karapat dapat ka pa rin purihin ng iyong mga anak. And we thank you for this night. We thank you for this day. As we honor you, as we praise you, in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, and all God's people say, Amen. Magpatulong, Kung saan ka struggling? Ito po ay tip number four sa message series natin na pinamgatang sampung tips para sa Christian. At magkaroon lamang po tayo ng konting review dun sa mga nauna ng mga tips or mga nauna ng mga messages na tinalakay po natin in our previous worship services. Beginning with tip number one, nagsimula po ang message series na ito by reminding us na ang bawat isa sa atin may calling na nagmumula sa Diyos. Hindi ka magiging Christian, hindi ka magiging believer and follower of Jesus Christ kung hindi ka muna tinawag ng Diyos. At meron pa siyang ibang mga pagkatawag pagkatapos nun. Tawag na maglingkod sa Kanya, tawag na sumunod sa Kanyang layunin o mission sa buhay. Kaya nga ang pamagat ng message na yan, mag-respond sa iyong calling. Tip number two, or message number two in the series, pinamagatan po natin sa habang panahon, worshiping. Kung sa tinalakay po natin, how important living a lifestyle of worship is for the believer. Na bukod sa tayo ay laging sumasamba, nagsisimba, hindi natin inahayaan matapos ang isang linggo na hindi tayo sumasamba sa Diyos, pumupunta sa ating mga simbahan pa sumamba sa Diyos. But we also learned that worship is more than just an activity, but it is our life. It is our lifestyle. At iba't ibang mga paraan by which we can express our worship unto God. Tip number three, tinalakay naman po natin dyan sa message number three, na ang buhay kristyano ay discipling. Kung saan we learned once again how important discipleship is for the Christian church, for the Christian believer, for us all. And today, minsan pa, eto ngayon ang ating tatalakayin, yung tip number four. Ang title ng message na ito ay, Magpatulong kung saan ka struggling. Can you repeat after me and say those words once again? Magpatulong kung saan ka struggling. At pakisabi nyo sa inyong mga katabi, lalo na kung meron kang inkling, kung meron kang hinala o discernment, kung ano kaya ang struggle niyang katabi mo, pakisabi mo sa kanya, look to that person eye to eye and tell him or her, magpatulong kung saan ka struggling. Magpatulong kung saan ka struggling. Dahil, una po sa lahat, 
kailangan nating matandaan that struggling is part of the Christian life. Struggling is part of the Christian walk. Struggling is part of the Christian journey. Meron at meron talaga tayo magiging struggles. Kahit na nga, ikaw na ay isang mananampalataya. Matthew 26 verse 41 reminds us of the experience of the disciples of Jesus Christ. Nung uli silang magkakasama sa isang hardin at bago maaresto si Jesus para maranasan niya yung kanyang uh, mga prinofisay na mga experiences. While Jesus was with his disciples in this very momentous occasion, Matthew 26, 41 tells us, describes to us how his disciples were at that time. Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, I read Matthew 26, 41, Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Several points we can see here from this verse. Unang punto dyan, yung paggamit ng term na temptation. Because one way that we can say that we're having struggles is also that we're experiencing temptation. To some extent, they are synonymous with one another. Kaya pag sinabi natin, nagsa-struggle ako, struggling siya, may struggle tayo, ang pinag-uusapan natin, may temptation, may mga tukso, natutukso na naman. Yan nga nabanggit natin in our introduction, iba-iba tayo ng kahinaan, iba-iba tayo ng struggles. Therefore, sa iba't ibang paraan tayo natutukso. Yung katabi mo, malakas yan. Pag alimbawa, usapan pera, hindi mo magugoyo yan. May ganong mga tao, uh, sa lahat ng bagay, bagsak yan. Pero pagdating sa pera, hindi mo yan maiisahan. Kaya alam na alam mo na, hindi siya dun tutuksuhin sa pera kasi matibay siya dun eh. Hindi dun. Subukan mo sa love life, bagsak ka gadyan. Di ba? So, may mga tao sabi nga nila, ganda ng karyer, ganda ng sweldo, pero bakit ba naman talaga pagdating sa love life, laging dun siya, bagsak. Tapos meron naman mga tao, kabaligtaran nun, pagdating sa love life, winner na winner yan. Di ba? Uh, whether ito ay boyfriend, girlfriend, o asawa, nakamit na ako ng ganong mga tao na harabang jackpot na jackpot pagdating sa love life. Minsan nakakaingit din yun, ha? lalo na ako sa oras na ito, wala ka namang love life, o matagal ka nang hindi nagkaka-love life, o hindi ka pa talaga nagkaka-love life mula nung ikay uh, pumasok dito sa mundong ito, at ngayon eh, ikay uh, 50 mahigit na, na minsan nakakaingit yan. Nakakaingit din yan kung halimbawa eh, nakailang palit ka na rin. Girlfriend dito, girlfriend dyan, o boyfriend dito, boyfriend dyan, asawa dito, asawa dyan. Uh, mahirap din yun. Nakakaingit tuloy yung iba pag nakikita mo, bakit may ganun naman, ano? Posible naman na going strong? Mukhang nga abot talaga itong mga to sa 50th wedding anniversary nila. Mukhang mamamatay talaga sila ng sabay. May ganun mga tao. Pero pagdating naman sa pera, doon naman sila bagsak. Diba? Kaya naman pala talaga, talagang tayo lang dalawa, eh kasi lahat nakagalit sila. Dahil mga nautangan, mga, kung anong mga traso lang kung kanikanino. Pero, pagdating sa love life, winner. And even as you become a believer, dahil dito sa ating binasa, Matthew 26, 41, Jesus was talking to His disciples. Yun yung mga kausap niya. Uh, pagkatapos ng maraming mga turuan, maraming mga one-on-one -on -one sessions, nakita rin nila mga miracles ng Jesus Christ. He taught them about the gospel. But they had to remind them, even as you are my disciples, even as you are believers, watch and pray. Isa ito sa mahalagang paalala sa atin in overcoming struggles. We will discuss more of this at the end of our message. Pero, sabi nga sa atin dito, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. 
This reminds us of a concept in Christianity and theology known as man's composition. Mayroong pag-aaral sa ating pananampalataya, lalo na sa aspeto ng Christian theology, kung saan tinututukan ano ba yung composition ng tao, what makes us what we are. And may tinatawag na theory na dichotomy, kung saan posible ang tao na hahati sa dalawa, yung physical or flesh at spiritual or yung ating espiritu or sometimes also known as soul. Merong another concept or theory which is called trichotomy kung saan nahahati daw ang tao sa tatlo, body, soul, and spirit. At meron pang iba pang mga teorya, mga teorya ang nakabase sa iba't ibang mga verses, iba't ibang mga aklat sa Biblia din. However, for today's message, eh tanggapin na lang muna natin na at least for the sake of argument, eh merong dalawang pagkabahagi ang tao base sa Matthew chapter 26:41 or yung tinatawag na dichotomy. May tinatawag na body, physical or flesh at merong tinatawag na spirit na minsan ay tinatawag ding soul, yun yung is spiritual. So pag ikaw ay nakakakilala sa Panginoon, you've received Christ, you become a Christian, you become saved, you become a believer and follower of Jesus Christ. Yung espiritu natin na dating patay dahil sa kasalanan has been made born again by God, has been made spiritually alive by God, kaya yun yung sinasabing espiritong willing. Yun yung sinasabing parte ng pagkatao natin na willing sumunod sa Diyos. Willing ma-overcome ang struggle. Willing magsay ng no to sin. Yung part natin na naborn again. Yung part natin that has been made spiritually alive by the grace of God. Ephesians chapter 2, John chapter 3, and other verses in scriptures says so. Pero sabi din dyan, but the flesh is weak. So yun yung bahagi natin na physical, yun yung tinatawag dito na flesh, yun yung tinatawag nating body. Kaya tuloy, nasasabi natin, may struggle sa Christian life. Naglalaban yung dalawang yun. Yung espiritu ngayon na buhay or born again at yung flesh na makasalanan. And sometimes, yung struggle is not always a negative. Sometimes, the existence of the struggle is not necessarily something to be sad about. Kasi, pwede yung ibig sabihin na may struggle, nagsa-struggle ka patungo sa pagsunod sa gusto ng Espiritu, paalis sa gusto ng flesh. Ngayon, na nakakalungkot kung halimbawa, ito yung gusto ng Espiritu, pero ang nagwawagi ay ang flesh. But as you grow and grow more in your faith in God, nakikita mo na mas nagwawagi yung Espiritu mo, hinihila yung flesh mo until it comes to a point that you see na yung nangunguna na, yung mas nasusunod na sa yung buhay, ay yung Espiritu na ibinigay sa iyo ng Panginoon. Now, that is why naniniwala tayo na may struggle kasi may tinatawag na sinful nature of man. May struggle or struggling because of the existence of the sinful nature of man. Yun yung sinasabi nating physical, body, flesh. Romans chapter 7, verses 15 to 20 reminds us of this. Medyo poetic yung pagbabanggit ni Apostle Paul dito, but somehow probably as you listen to it, describes many of us and how we feel pag halimbawa nahuhulog tayo sa tukso. Lalo na pag naborn again ka na, spiritually alive ka na, yung spirit mo willing na na sumunod sa Lord at magno to temptation, pero yung body mo, yung physical mo, yung flesh mo, nanghina na naman, ang bango niya kasi. Nanghina na naman kasi iba talaga pag yung leeg. Naku, weakness ko talaga yung leeg. Lalo na pag may pawis na nagdidrip konti dyan. Yung, naku. Ano ngayon yung nararamdaman ng marami na believer na dapat remorse, dapat matinding kalungkutan, 
na pag nagkakasala ka ulit, nauhulo ka doon sa kasalanan, nababadrip ka sa sarili mo, ganun dapat ang nararamdaman natin. Uh, yung, hindi na ako to dapat eh. Hindi na ako to dapat eh. Now listen to Romans chapter 7, 15 to 20. For I do not understand my own actions. For I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that it is good. So now, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. So, makikita natin dito ang ibig sabihin nung sinful nature of man. So, sabi natin na posible na nahati ang tao sa dalawang komposisyon. Yung physical at spiritual. We call that in theology as dichotomy. Yung physical is the body, the flesh, at yung body, yung flesh, yung physical, nandudun daw ang sin. Sin dwells in that physical body. Sa nagsimula yun? Nagsimula yun sa Garden of Eden. Nagsimula yun sa creation of Adam and Eve and how they rebelled and disobeyed against God. When God created Adam and Eve, they were created perfect and beautiful and sinless. Pero sabi ng Panginoon sa kanila, sa nakikita mo sa hardin, sa lahat ng mga nakikita mo pwedeng kainin, lahat yan pwedeng yung kainin except yung isa dun sa gitna ng hardin. May dalawang puno na kakaiba dun sa gitna ng hardin. The tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Sabi ng Lord sa kanila, yung tree of knowledge of good and evil, dead mahin nyo yun. Huwag nyo papansinin yun. Bawal yun. Huwag nyo kainin yun. Hindi naman inexplain ng Lord sa kanila bakit bawal. Except na sinabi sa kanila, pag kinain mo yun, pag kinain mo yun, you will surely die. And we know the story. They did not obey the Lord. They were tempted and deceived by the serpent. Na alam na natin ngayon is Satan. Na kung paano yung Satan, e dati rin si Lucifer, na create din ng God, isang worshiper, isang cherub in heaven, nag rin, nag-disobey sa Diyos, naghakot pa ng, ng mga anghel na sumama sa kanya mag yun yung mga naging demonyo. At as a result, gusto niya yung mga tao, yung si Eva si Adan, would have the same fate as he had. He was kicked out of heaven, so he wanted Adam and Eve to also be kicked out of the Garden of Eden. And to some extent, at that point in time, he succeeded. He was able to deceive Eve, at pagkatapos ma-deceive si Eve, si Eve naman, hinila naman yung kanyang uh, magaling na asawa, at mula dun sa kanilang pag-disobey, pag-rebel against God, pumasok na ang kasalanan sa sanlibutan. Namatay ang espiritu nila. So sila rin, no? pinanganak na physically alive, spiritually alive, but because of that sin, their spirit became dead. And from then on, lahat na nang ipinapanganak mula sa kanila, pinapanganak na physically alive, yung flesh alive, pero yung spirit ay patay because of sin. At yung sin na yun nagdudwell in the physical body. Yung sin na yun nagdudwell in the physical body. That has a result. Has a result. Siguro hindi tayo dapat nagkakasakit. Hindi tayo dapat inuubo, sinisipon, at kung ano pa malalang karamdaman. Hindi siguro dapat tumatanda ang itsura natin tulad ng mga katabi ninyo. Di ba? Hindi siguro tayo dapat ah, namamatay, pero dahil dun sa kasalanan, yung sin dwells in the physical body na corrupt ang ating physical body. People now get sick and people now die because of sin. Tapos hindi lang yun, habang nandito pa sa lupa, laging parang nadadala ka, namamagnetize ka ng kasalanan. Hindi mo na nga kailangan sabihin, tukso, layuan mo ko. Minsan pa sinasabi mo, tukso, lapitan mo ako. 
Minsan, ganun yung tumatakbo sa isipan natin. Hindi yung tukso. Layo ayan na naman yung tukso. Hindi, minsan pinagpipray mo. Ba't wala yata masyadong tukso ngayon? <laughs> kasi, mula kay Eva at kay Adan, yung flesh weak, kasi sin dwells in that body. At pag tayo nakakilala sa Panginoon bilang Lord and Savior, ang nangyayari, yung ating ispiritong patay na bubuhay ng muli, na buborn again, we become a new creation at yun ngayon yung naglalaban habang nandito tayo sa lupa. Yun ngayon yung ating ino-overcome sa kapangyarihan, ispirito, biyaya ng Diyos. But that is what is called the sinful nature of man. Habang nabubuhay tayo dito sa lupa, yung pagiging makasalanan ng ating katawan, ng ating laman, hindi yan completely ma-overcome until physical death. Makikita mo lang yung pagbabago, yung improvement, hanggang sa halos wala nang ka epek sa iyo ang tukso. Pero nagkakasakit ka pa rin, nagkakaroon ka pa rin ng mga uh, weaknesses here and there. Pero kailan matatapos yung hindi ka na nagkakasakit? Kailan matatapos yung hindi ka na tutukso? Physical death. Physical death. Kasi pagkatapos ng physical death, naniniwala tayo na yung espiritu mo, Pupunta yan ngayon in paradise. If you are a believer and follower of Jesus Christ, if you are a Christian, kung bago ka namatay, you have repented and believed in the gospel, naniniwala tayo sa pangako ng Diyos, you will be in paradise. You will be in heaven. And then, at some point in time, magkakaroon ng tinatawag na rapture, magkakaroon ng tinatawag na second coming, at ang pangako ng Diyos sa New Testament, sa Biblia, yung mga namatay ng mananampalataya. Kung ikay mapapasama doon eventually at some point in time, at nandun ka sa heaven, pag nag then later the second coming, you will rise up from the dead, or mula kung saan ka nandun doon, ikaw ay babalik dito sa lupa, magbobolt in yung dati mong physical body, whether it was buried, or ito may na-scatter, or na-disintegrate, magre-reunion yung ispiritu mo at yung dati mong physical body dito sa lupa and then it will be raptured unto the sky in the clouds where Jesus will be seen sa rapture then later sa second coming, coming down dito sa earth. Yung buong proseso na yon is a very complicated thing and at some point in time, eh, mas pag-aaralan pa natin yan ng mas masuse but is also known in Christian theology as glorification. Tinatawag na glorification. So, ang ibig sabihin lang, kung ngayon, naiirita ka, naiinis ka, ba't nakakasakit ka pa? Meron ba sa inyo minsan, ayan na naman, nag-change weather. Bakit ba kailangan pa nag-change weather? Linalagnat ka, inuubo ka, hinihika ka. O di naman kayo minsan, naiinis kayo. Dati naman, pag kumakain ka ng baka, ng steak, okay lang kahit gabi-gabi. Bakit ngayon, kahit isang hibla lang ng baka, eh para ikamamatay mo na. Hindi ka na makalakad ng matino. Dati yung crabs, pag kinakain mo yan, nakakasampu ka. Ngayon, dagtalang niya, parang nakupo. Kumakaway na langit agad sa iyo. Minsan, nakakairita yan. Bakit ganon yung katawan natin? Lalo na kung last year lang eh, ang mga trinobak na picture eh, parang kakaiba katawan mo panlaban sa mga beach competition. Diba? Ngayon, parang beach volleyball na ang katawan mo. So, nakakainis yun. Bakit ganun yung katawan natin? Eh, mga kapatid, tanggapin nyo na. Tanggapin nyo na. Kaya nga, ang lahat kong payo sa marami, kung sa tingin mo, ngayon, ang pinakamaganda mo. Sino sa'yo naniniwala? Ito yung pinakamaganda mo. Say amen. Ito yung pinakaseksi mo. Say amen. Sa'yo naniniwala, ito yung pinakagwapo mo ngayon. Say amen. Magpapicture na kayo na magpapicture. I-post yun na na i-post yan sa Instagram at saka sa Facebook kasi malamang sa malamang, hindi nababalik yan. At least every now and then, ato throwback ng Facebook, napapaalalahanan ka that once upon a time. Once upon a time. Yun na yun. Pero dapat natin tanggapin na kahit anong siyensya. Just recently, I was talking to uh, a few of our uh, churchmates and I told them, kamamatay lang ako hindi nyo napansin sa dami ng nangyayari sa buong mundo. Kamamatay lang ni Paul Allen, who is the co-founder of Bill Gates ng Microsoft. He died as one of the richest men in the world. 
Mula noong 1970s up to the 1980s, aktibo silang dalawa ni Bill Gates in building Microsoft. And then middle of the 80s, na-discover niyang may cancer siya at meron silang internal battles ni Bill Gates. So he left the administrative and operational task of Microsoft to him. Pero nanatili siyang uh, board member, malaking stockholder. So kahit nagtayo na siya ng maraming mga kumpanya, nalabanan niya ang cancer many, many times, uh, not once, parang three times pa ata, eh, siya ay patuloy na nakikilala sa business circles as a very successful entrepreneur and a very successful scientist contributing to the development of human civilization as we know it today. And uh, siguro baka a month ago lang, ah, nabalitaan na bumalik ulit yung cancer niya. Sipin mo, isang taong nalabanan ng cancer in the 80s, iniisip mo, babalik pa ba talaga yun? Oo, bumalik ulit sa kanya in the 90s. At sasabihin mo na napakayaman na niya. Ako minsan may ganun akong ano eh, fantasy. Yung magkaroon ka lang ng napakaraming pera, you can avail of the most modern hospitalization, the best of doctors, the best of medicine. Uh, hindi pwedeng hindi matitreat ko ano man yung meron ka. But this person, recently, with all his wealth, kahit ang laki-laki nun ang kanyang yaman, eh finally, at 65 years old, di na masama, ha? Hindi na masama, ha? Kasi kung mula nung 80s, eh, nagkaroon siya ng sakit, eh umabot siya ng itong 2018 at 60 plus years old, eh siya ay namatay. But what can you learn there? Na kahit ang pinakamayaman, kahit yung mga pinakamatatalino, Sipin mo si Paul Allen, he has access not only financially to the best of hospital care medicines for these kinds of sicknesses, but he was also in the loop in what is most modern. Siguro yung hindi pa natin alam sa siyensya, alam na nila. Yeah. Sa mga pinagpipray ko nga, sana pagdating ng araw, itong mga mayayaman na ito, makadiscover ng dalawang klasing bagay. Isang machine, napapasok ka na lang doon sa machine na yun, at malalaman, tatayo ka lang, wala kang masyadong gagawin. Tatayo, dadaan ka lang, malalaman na lahat kung ano ang mali sa katawan mo. Hindi ka tulad ngayon, ang dami pa, may x-ray. Pag hindi nag-work yung x-ray, may mga CT scan pa, may mga MRI. Yung iba na takot na takot sa, sa yung enclosed spaces. Pag napapasok sa ganyang klaseng mga check-up, baka dun mamatay, hindi dun sa sakit eh. Kasi minsan yung mga ganyang mga... Uh, makinarya, papasok ka pa lang dun sa loob o hindi ka pwede magkamot, ang sikip-sikip, no? Eh, uh, pinagpipray ko, makaimbento sila ng isang machine, dadaan ka lang, pagdaan mo in one minute, alam na agad, magpiprint out na. Ay, eto, eto ang mga problema nita, eto, malapit na itong mamatay, yung nakalagay na dun sa, ano. And then, sana pagdating ng araw, makaimbento sila ng isang pill. Isa na lang, bakit kailangan minsan, eh, ang dami-dami mong iniinom, Nakakita na ako na ilang kapatiran na ganyan. Merong siyang sitwasyon. Tapos, 25 pills yung iniinom niya. Para siyang walking mercury drug. Eh, sana makaimbento nung isa lang, no? Isa lang. Tapos, uh, one pill for all sicknesses. Kahit ano. Sipon hanggang sa heart ailment. O sipon hanggang sa cancer. Paglunok mo, idudumi mo lang, magaling ka na. ba? Wag yan naman talaga na invento nila eh masasabi mong grabe na siguro yung advancement in human technology and medicine. But this guy Paul Allen with all his wealth, with all his experience and knowledge and access to the best of the best, namatay pa din. At sa totoo lang, lahat naman tayo mamamatay pa rin. Hindi tayo pwedeng hindi mamatay. Pinagpipray lang natin na medyo matagal-tagal pa sana. Sana mga after 100 years pa, ba? Sana after 20 years pa, 30 years pa, even our prayers. Because I do believe that God answers prayer. Ano man yung ating mga physical ailments, naniniwala ako. Hindi lang technology, hindi lang medicine, hindi lang doktor ang gagamot niyan. Ang gagamot niyan is the great physician, Jesus Christ. I truly believe this, that Jesus Christ heals. But even our faith in Jesus Christ to heal does merely what? Delay. 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 Delay the inevitable, which is what? 
the body, the flesh, the physical sin dwells in it, it will still get sick and it will still die. And it has to die. Dahil pag hindi ito namatay, edi hindi pupunta yung Espiritu into paradise, into heaven. Edi hindi rin mangyayari yung glorification na mababalik yung Espiritu mo sa isang bagong katawan that will never get sick and will never sin anymore. Amen. Kaya, kung ano mang meron tayo ngayon, buhay, thank you Lord. Minsan nagkakasakit, thank you Lord pa din. Basta alam natin, God is in control. Kaya pakisabi niyo yan sa inyo mga katabi, huwag ka nang mag-alala, God is in control of everything. Sabihin niyo yan sa inyo mga katabi, kapatid, huwag ka nang mag-alala, God is in control of everything. Number three, struggling because of the sinfulness of this world. Struggling because of the sinfulness of this world. 1 John chapter 2, 15-17 do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and pride of life is not from the Father but is from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. So meron tayong struggles Kasi sinful ang nature ng man. The flesh, the body is weak. Tapos dagdag mo pa that we live in a sinful world. Nagsusumikap ka ng magbago, nagsusumikap ka ng sumunod sa Panginoon, pero yung kasama mo sa bahay, hindi pa naman mana ng palataya. Kasama mo sa trabaho, hindi naman mana ng palataya. May mga barkada ka pa rin, naaya pa rin ng aya sa iyo, gumawa ng kalokohan. We live in a sinful world. Kaya habang nakiipag-interact tayo sa sinfulness of this world, may struggle, may struggle, may struggle. And Satan is not far behind struggling because of the satanic attacks. Mula nung inatake ni Satanas, si Eva at si Adan sa Ardin, nananatili pa rin siya sa pagkilos upang maraming mga anak ng Diyos, mana ng palataya, bumigay sa kanilang tukso, sa kanilang mga kainaan, sa kanilang mga struggles, may satanic attacks. First Peter chapter 5, 8-11 to reminds us of this reality. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace who has called you to His eternal glory in Christ will Himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To Him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Several things ang minention na naman dyan sa mga verses na yan na mahalaga sa ating pag-overcome ng struggle. Unang-una na yung paalala sa atin ng author na meron talagang Satan, merong devil, may demonic attacks. He prowls around. Nagahanap siya sino yung mga, ako ito, ang kainaan, alak yan. Sa alak yan, ako po. At ano ang kainaan yan? Mga birthday party. Subukan mo lang. Basta birthday party, bagsak na naman ng pagkakristyano niyan. You know, sa Bible, ang pinagbabawal, hindi naman yung pag eh. Ang pinagbabawal sa Bible, yung paglalasing. Pero bihirang-bihira naman talaga, at lalo na pag nasa birthday party, ang napipigilan ng sariling hindi maglasing. Lalo na nga pag siya yung may birthday, ha, na-promote, isa nga pag umuwi pa sa Pilipinas, painom ka naman dyan! Kaya alam na alam mo na agad, naku, uuwi na naman doon sa Pilipinas. The Spirit is willing. But the flesh is weak. The flesh is weak. Diba? Kasi nga, ang devil, alam yun ang weakness mo eh. Kaya magpapadala siya ng mga tropa mo, kaibigan mo, mga barkada mo, mga kamag-anak mo. Minsan lang to brad. Oo nga, minsan lang maiintindihan ni Lord ito. Magpapadala siya ng mga 
Naku, may ganun talaga mga kapatid. Kailangan yung tanggapin yan. Intindi, may ganun talaga. Pero may sinasabi sa atin dito na karagdagang paraan how to overcome struggles. Kanina sa Matthew, watch and pray. Dito ang sabi, verse 9, Resist Him. Firm in your faith. Resist Him. Firm in your faith. Posible daw yun. Ito na yung tropa mo. Birthday na naman. Mag, naku, uwi ka ng Pilipinas. Uh, mga lasingan na naman. Bukod daw sa nagpipray ka, kaya mo na daw to gawin. Resist Him. Hindi brad, minsan lang naman to. Firm in your faith. And then babanatan mo pa ako, eh di ba nga the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. Mali pang application ng verse. O sige na, the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. Pastor, ang cute kasi talaga. Minsan lang to hindi na darating yung mga ganito ka-cute. Sabi sa atin dyan, verse 9, Resist him firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. Kapatid, isipin mo, hindi lang ikaw yung ganyan. Lahat ng Kristiyano, kahit pa mga pastor na katulad ko, are experiencing the same kind of suffering. Now, that subject matter we will be discussing in more detail in our other worship services. Pero makikita mo rin yung connection ng struggle, temptation, and suffering. Talaga naman minsan parang nagsasuffer ka kung hanggang sa kasalukuyan ay dinadala ka, nadadali ka ng kahinaan mo. Yung ayaw mo nang gawin, ginagawa mo pa rin. Yung alam mong hindi na dapat gawin. Gusto mo pa rin gawin. Sabi sa verse 10, And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to His eternal glory in Christ, will Himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. What does that mean? May grace of God. May grace of God. At yung biyaya ng Diyos, ang siyang magtatawid sa atin patungo dun sa tinatawag na eternal glory in Christ. Yun yung pinag-uusapan natin kanina na Habang nandito sa lupa, may struggle. Pero pag namatay, pupunta sa heaven, sa paradise. Then later, magra-rapture, magsa-second coming, magre-reunion yung espiritu mo at yung katawan mo, mag-glorify yung body. Yun yung sinasabi na eternal glory in Christ. Ngunit habang hindi pa daw nangyayari yun, habang nandito ka sa lupa, when you pray, you resist Satan, you're firm in your faith by the grace of God, you will see the Lord restoring you, confirming you, strengthening you, and establishing you. And then you will see yourself every time you come to a worship service like this, giving all the glory to God. Sabi this of verse 11, to Him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Kaya ito nakakita ka ng mga kapatid ang pagkumakanta talaga naman ako mighty to save. Ang galing talaga ng Diyos ko. Kasi kung ako lang, matagal na akong bagsak. Ang galing talaga ng Diyos ko dahil kung ako lang, wasak na kami nun pa. Ang galing talaga ng Diyos ko. Kasi dahil sa Kanya, kahit ako'y makasalanan, kahit ako'y bagsak ng bagsak, nananatili pa rin nakatindig. All because of the grace of God. Which leads you to point number five. Yes, may struggle. But struggling will cause us to depend more on God's grace. Struggling will cause us to depend on God's grace. Second Corinthians chapter 12, 7 to 10 is a very important portion of scripture concerning this fact. So to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Hindi ko pa talaga maintindihan bakit po ba... Sa tagal-tagal ko na bilang mana ng palataya, itong weakness na ito, itong struggle na ito, nandito pa rin. Bakit ba hindi naman talaga ma-overcome ko ito? Gusto ko na sana ma-overcome ito. Si Paul nagsasabi, sana wala na lang itong weakness na ito. Pero, naku, may purpose si Lord. Inalaw niyang manatili yung weakness na yan para hindi rin siya maging conceited. 
Ilan ng Lord na nandiyan yung weakness na yun para hindi tayo magyabang at magmataas para lagi tayong dependent on the grace of God. If whatever you have today is frustrating, if whatever you have today as a struggle is sometimes so disappointing, look at it this way. Inaalaw ng Lord manatili yan dyan kasi lalo at lalo katuloy nagdidepend sa biyaya ng Diyos. At napakagandang uh, linya ito eh. Sabi, For when I am weak, then I am strong. So you come today in worship and you come in weakness. You lay yourself bare before God. But then, ang ganda, no, sabi, For when I am weak, then I am strong. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Tuloy din, dahil meron tayong mga struggles, hindi tayo pwede magmataas, pwede magmalaki, Kaya nga ang tema ng message natin dito, when you're struggling, magpatulong ka. When you're struggling, mag-church ka. When you're struggling, magpa-advise ka, magpa-counsel ka, magpa-pray ka. Huwag mong solohin. Struggling humbles us and reminds us how much we need each other throughout our Christian life. Dahil yung struggle na yan, yung sin that dwells in the flesh, will remain until we die. At habang yan ang nangyayari, eh lalo tayo nag-church. Lalo tayo nagpapadisciple. Lalo tayo nagpapapray. Nagpapatulong sa kapatid sa Panginoon. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 tells us, Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. Maghanap ka ng mga mana ng palataya na pag nakita mo, hindi naman dahil perfect siya. Minsan nga baka nakikita mo sarili mo sa kanya, parang katulad ko lang yan eh si kuya. Feeling ko yung weakness niya, weakness ko din eh. Parang katulad ko lang yan si ate. Feeling ko yung weakness ni ate, weakness ko din. Pero nabibless ako sa kanya dahil nagpapatuloy siya sa Panginoon. Kaya ito dapat yung gawin, mag-vault in kayo. Mag-partner kayo. Kayo maging mga beshi-beshi. At magsabihan kayo ng, ay ganun ba? Eh, weakness ko din yan. Magpalakasan tayo. Let's build each other up. Magsitahan tayo. Ako rin, pag birthday, dyan ako bumabagsak. Ako rin, pag nagbabakasyon, dyan ako bumabagsak. O din ay, may sumisita na sa'yo. O, ayan, may birthday na naman, ha, Brad? O yan, alam mo na, umamasamain, magbabakasyon ka. O ayan na naman, naglakad, namamawis. Kainaan mo yan pag nag-flex ng muscles. Kainaan mo yan pag amoy palmoli bambuok. O dumadaan ang offering. Alam mo yan, hindi ka na nga naguhulog, dumudukot ka pa ng pera. So, nasisita ka na mga kapatiran, hindi para paiya ka, kundi para i-encourage ka. James chapter 4, 6 to 10 is an additional reading for today's message. Wala sa slides. But if you have your smartphones with you, kindly Google it. If you have your Bibles with you, kindly check it. James chapter 4, verse 6 to 10. James 4, 6-10 says, and I'll be reading from the ESV or the English Standard Version. But he gives more grace. Therefore it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your, ha- your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wretched and mourn and weep, let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and He will exalt you. May kahinaan ka, huwag mong takbuhan. May kahinaan ka, huwag ka maging in denial. May kahinaan ka, may struggle ka, natutokso ka lagi doon, tanggapin mo, yan yung weakness mo eh. Lalo na kung 45 years old ka na, at mula nung 5 years old ka, yan na yun, Wala nang kaduda-duda, iyan na yun. O yan yung mga yun. Minsan hindi lang isa, marami pa. Diyan ka natutukso, diyan ka inaatake, diyan ka bumabagsak. Maghanap ka ng mga kapatiran na tutulong sa'yo, magpakahambol ka. Maghanap ka ng mga katiwatiwala. Yung hindi mami, ipopost sa Facebook. Yung mga napag-usapan nyo. Hindi mami, pag nagtuturo ng Bible study o nagpipreach, example ka. Maghanap ka, may mga katiwatiwala naman eh. Meron yan. Kaya pakisabi niyo sa inyong mga katabi, feeling ko ikaw yung katiwatiwala na sinasabi ni pastor sa church. At pag kayo naman ay nalapitan, 
maging katiwatiwala. Amen. Pag kaya ay nalapitan, maging katiwatiwala. Amen. Hindi mamaya-maya gagawa ka ng bagong group chat. Uy, alam mo ba, Brad? Atin-atin lang to pag lang natin siya, ha? Nako po, bad trip yan. Bad trip yan. Kaya pakisabi niyo sa mga nakapalibot sa inyo, feeling ko, katiwatiwala ka. Feeling ko, pwede kong ikwento sa iyo ang kainaan ko at tayo ay magpapalakasan. And finally, number seven, struggling will teach us to overcome. Struggling is an experience that results in us learning what it is to overcome. Simple logic, really. Pag hindi mo naman nararanasan yung struggle, sa hindi mo ma- marirealize yung need to overcome. Pero dahil pinaparana sa iyo yung mga iba't ibang struggles, natututo ka mag sa grace ng God at natututun mo na posible, pwede, kaya, by the grace of God, to overcome all of your all of our, all of my struggles in life. Struggling will teach us to overcome. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 is our last reading for today. And again, I read from the ESV, or the English Standard Version, kung saan sabi, No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, He will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. Kung asan ka ngayon, kung ano yung pinagdadaanan mo ngayon, kung ano yung kahinaan natin ngayon, hinayaan naman ng Lord makarating ka dyan eh. Kung minsan, nag-iisip ka pa rin, bakit ba ako nasa ganitong sitwasyon? Lalo na kung nagawa mo naman ng tama, naglilingkod ka naman sa Diyos, Pero andyan-dyan ka pa rin sa state na yan. Not the best of state, not the perfect of state, not the most ideal of state, but you're there. O halos lahat na okay na sa buhay mo, pero meron ito, may blind spot. Meron isang area na parang hindi okay. At may mga bagay na hindi ko alam bilang pastor mo, hindi alam na ibang mga tao, baka nga kahit pa-asawa mo, hindi alam. Pero alam mo, yun, may, may darkness na nakakasingit every now and then in your life. Eh. If you know that, if you understand that, if even right now as I deliver this message, alam mo, kinakausap ka ng Panginoon. Remember this. God will never put you there. God will never allow you to be there, to have that, that He will not provide the way of escape. He will always provide the way of escape. Andito ka ngayon, Alam mo, sa biyaya ng Diyos, makakalusot ka, makakalagpas ka, ma-overcome mo. Ano man yung kainaan mo ngayon, matatagumpayan mo yan. Ano yung hindi maayos sa buhay mo, maaayos din yan. Struggling will teach us to overcome. Knowing all of these things, make this your prayer for today. Make this your prayer for tonight. I will overcome all my struggles in Jesus' name. I will overcome all my struggles in Jesus' name. If you brought your smartphones with you, picture nyo naman ang slide na ito. picture nyo po ang slide na ito. Post nyo sa Instagram or sa Facebook at lagay nyo po ng hashtag para sa akin ito. Tapos, alimbawa, pwede mo rin itagi bang kilala mo para sa iyo na rin, ha? Diba? Para sa akin Ito. And can you repeat after me and say these words over and over again together aloud, please? I will overcome all my struggles in Jesus' name. Say it again. I will overcome all my struggles in Jesus' name. And one more time, let's say it together. I will overcome all my struggles in Jesus' name. Aming Diyos at aming Ama, salamat po sa mensaheng napakinggan po namin sa araw na ito. Na minsan pa nagpaalala po sa aming lahat na kahit meron kami mga struggles, we will, we can overcome by the grace of God in Jesus' name. Kaya mga kapatid sa Panginoon, saan man kayo nakaupo, as all heads are bowed down and all eyes are closed, itaas po natin ang dalawang kamay natin 
magpray tayo sa Lord. At sa pagtaas natin ng ating mga kamay sa Kanya, itaas natin sa Lord ang ating mga struggles. Sari-sari, iba-iba, personal. Come and lift those hands. Come and lift those struggles to Jesus. We will pray. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us. May victory kami because of Jesus. We can rise up above all our struggles in life. And we come in all humility. Wala kami pwede itago sa inyo. Alam mo yung mga kahinaan namin, saan kami bumibigay, ano yung mga tukso na unique sa amin. Thank you, Lord, because today, we've been reminded, but your grace is sufficient for us. And your power is made perfect in weakness. We come weak. We come as weak as we have always been. We come, O oh Lord, knowing that for when I am weak, then I am strong because of the grace of God. I pray, Lord, even right now, mag-flow sa kwartong ito ang kapayapaan ng Diyos, ang kalakasan ng Diyos, para matagumpayan ang lahat ng struggles. Pinagpipray ko, Lord, yung mga may karamdaman, kami na may mga karamdaman, heal our physical bodies in Jesus' name. Receive today your healing. Declare this from your heart by faith. Jesus Christ heals you. Jesus Christ heals you. Jesus Christ heals you. I pray for people praying for better jobs. I pray for God's blessing to be poured out in your life. Magkaroon ka ng mas maganda at mas maayos sa trabaho as soon as possible time as the Lord wills. I pray for marriages. I pray for relationships. I pray that God will bless your love life. I pray for people with financial problems. Lord, pour out so much blessing. Pour out so much blessing on your people. Lalo na yung nagtatapat sa paglilingkod sa inyo. Makita nila, totoo nga, my God shall supply all my needs according to His riches. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the healing. Thank you for the provision. Thank you for the guidance. There are people in this room today asking for wisdom, the road to take, the path to take, the direction to take for their lives and for their families. Holy Spirit, guide your people sa tamang desisyon, sa kalooban ng Diyos. Revive us, restore us, empower us, fill us with your strength and with your anointing as you pray all of this in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let us continue to worship the Lord through our tithes and offerings. In our church, we have what we call Faithful Financial Supporters, or FFS. As partners in the ministry, our FFS commit themselves to give a monthly financial support for the ministries of our church. Let us prepare ourselves to give our tithes and offerings. Giving is worship. When we give our tithes and offerings, we are worshiping God. The Bible teaches us that we should be faithful in worship and be faithful in giving. The Bible says, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. Honor the Lord by giving Him the first part of all your income, and He will fill your barns with wheat and barley, and overflow your wine vats with the finest wines. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17 and 18. Tell those who are rich not to be proud and not to trust in their money, which will soon be gone. But their pride and trust should be in the living God who always richly gives us all we need for our enjoyment. Tell them to use their money to do good. They should be rich in good works and should give happily to those in need, always being ready to share with others whatever God has given them. Luke chapter 6 Verse 38. For if you give, you will get. Your gift will return to you in full and overflowing measure, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more and running over. Whatever measure you used to give, large or small, will be used to measure what is given back to you. Let us pray for our tithes and offerings. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to worship you through our giving. 
We recognize that whatever we have comes from you. We willingly obey what you have commanded in your word, to be faithful in giving our tithes and offerings. We believe that you will bless everyone who is faithful to you. We pray for those struggling in many areas of their lives, including their finances. We continue to worship and humble ourselves before you to give you our everything. Receive our giving, receive our worship. In Jesus' name, amen. We thank the Lord for the message that we have heard today through our speaker. Thank you for joining us in our online worship service. We hope and pray that our online worship service had been a blessing to all. We would like to be of service to you and help you grow more in faith. Connect with us through our Rise Up Church Facebook page. Subscribe to our Are You Church YouTube channel and have access to view live and recorded video messages by Pastor Roman Guevara. Be an encouragement to friends and family by sharing these timely messages on all your social media accounts. We hope to have you again in our online worship service. Invite friends and family to worship with us as well. God bless us all.